Hello, good evening. My name's Glyn Jones. I'm Vice Principal for Academic and Applied Education here at York College. And in this evening's session, I'm going to talk to, to you uh, about how we do A-levels here, uh, take you through the way in which we, we organise them, and hopefully give you some ideas about how you can make those decisions about which ones to choose and how to put a programme together for you. So let's go over to the presentation now and uh, you'll he hear my disembodied voice as the, as the, pre the presentation goes through. So I want to start by talking a little bit about why choose A levels, which seems a bit of a strange thing because you may well have already made that decision. But I think it's a useful one to consider. People generally tend to come to A levels frequently because it's the, it's the main thing they know about. It's a, it seems like a continuation, if you like, of the trajectory you're on from GCSEs. And there's a sem there's this seeming natural progression from GCSEs. Um, the big plus about A-levels is that uh, it, it allows you a range of subjects. You don't have to specialise at this stage anywhere near as much as you might otherwise. Um, it allows you to keep your options open at least for another year before you start trying to make decisions about what you're going to do after college. But it is worth remembering that it is a consistent academic approach and it's a rather unsurprisingly a more academic approach than you've been used to at GCSE. It's mostly exam based in, mo in most courses. It's entirely exam based in terms of its assessment and they are generally seen as a, a, a good preparation for university. But please bear in mind they're not the only route into higher education. I think it's only appropriate that we also consider some of the, the alternatives that line up alongside A-levels. And you've got plenty of time, even at this point, for you to uh, have a think about what the alternatives might be for you. Let's start with looking at what we call vocational courses. And I'm saying what we call vocational courses because the reality is for many of these programmes, we send very large numbers of these students on to university. It's so I suppose the technical term is they are, tend to be considered an applied general course. Now, at the college, the great majority of the vocational courses that we offer tend to be in the extended diploma um, bracket. Extended diplomas are about an equivalent size of three whole A-levels. So in other words, it means that they make up your entire programme of study. As I said, students often progress to university. We, in fact, we send more students from extended diplomas to university in a typical year than we do from A-levels. Admittedly, there are rather more of them to start with, but nonetheless, it, I think, underlines the point that it's a, it's a very well-trodden route. Learning is contextual. Is a, that's a big difference. If you like what you're studying to really make sense um, and link to the sort of field that you want to go and work in and want to go on and do, then it's a very good option. And assessment is mostly through coursework. So again, if you feel that exams are not where you do your best and you perhaps do better in coursework, then vocational courses are very well worth listen, uh, looking at. Of course, you may well have also heard about apprenticeships. Apprenticeships do have an enormous benefit in that you get to earn as you learn. Um, there is a much wider range of uh, subjects available for apprenticeships now, much, much wider than they were in the dim and distant past when I was choosing my uh, subject post-16. Um, and there's now, as opposed to those days, a progression route that takes you through to degree level qualifications. Um, so it, it doesn't mean that uh, that somebody does an apprenticeship and then is sort of stuck at what we call level three. It does obviously allow you to develop excellent employability skills and it's a very popular route with, with many students who've got a clear idea of what they want to do. It is important that you understand, however, that you need to have an employer, you need to be taken on by an employer in order to do an apprenticeship, but that is something that we can help you do. So let's focus though for now on A-levels and how we organise them. So let's have a look at what an A-level programme looks like at your college, because all A-level programmes are not the same. The way we work is uh, we still enter students, uh, we still enrol students to four subjects at the beginning of their programme. Um, they have a very wide range of uh, courses to choose from, as I hope you'll have recognised by now. And they are available in pretty much any combination. Um, I, I say this with some confidence. Um, every year I have to, bearing in mind we, we, we program uh, A -level, individual A-level programmes for about a thousand students each year and every year I have to say I'm sorry we can't do that combination to one, maybe two students. 
So if you think work that out, that is 99.8, 99.9, that sort of area in terms of uh, uh, success. So we're very proud of the, our ability to do this. We still enter students for AS exams at the end of their first year of study. Uh, and that's important for a number of reasons. It gives us a very clear idea of how well students are doing and it gives students a very well, a very good idea of how well they're doing. It, if they are, and we'll see in a moment, if, they, if there are any subjects that they're not continuing with, it means that they've got a qualification in that subject and they've got something to show for it. Uh, and that can obviously massively help with university offers and so on. Um, and one of the things that we've often decided, often seen from this starting with four and then moving on to three is that you'll be amazed at how many students who, will, who agonize over their fourth subject at the end of the first year have decided that actually their fourth choice is now their favorite subject and it's what they want to go off and study at university or get a job in. So alongside your choice of A-levels, and we'll talk a little bit more about what happens in the second year soon, there are other things that could be considered. Um, for example, we have we run the extended project qualification, which we I think is wonderful and our students do extremely well in. It's something that they can choose to do. And what we would normally do is start them on an extended project at the, towards the end in the summer term of their uh, of their first year. Most of the work gets done in the beginning of the of the second year and it's pretty much done and dusted by the March of the second year. There are enrichment activities, uh, a lot of clubs and societies, and we encourage students to run their own clubs and societies with our support. Um, we always say that if you can find 10 of you who want, are interested in the pursuit, then uh, we'll, we'll support you in establishing that. And, and many of the clubs that we've got have been running for many years uh, and have started in that way. We have sport and music development centres for people who, um, have, for whom those are their passions. And um, they, there's a great deal of additional activities which massively support a, a career application uh, for and we'll progression into higher education in those fields and of course work experience and volunteering are something we encourage a great deal and that many students get a lot from and for some students with a clear idea of where they want to progress work experience can be absolutely vital a totally essential thing that they need thinking a little bit more as i promised about what happens in the second year when we get some a students AS results, um, we, we look at those and they look at them, we look at them with the student and it, it, it gives us a bit of an idea of how, how well they're going, um, as I said, and it often assists in some decisions. The norm is for students to take three of those subjects onto full A levels and therefore they can leave with three whole A levels and an AS in the subject that they didn't continue with. However, some students are able to, uh, we agree that they can carry on with four, so they leave with four whole A-levels. Or some might, for example, in some cases, do three whole A-levels and then do a, an, an extra AS in their second year, leaving with three whole A-levels and two ASs. Or pick up an EPQ, I mentioned the EPQ before, leaving with three whole A-levels, an AS and an EPQ. The progression depends to an extent on how well you've done in your AS, what we think is tactically the best thing for you to do and what your ambitions are. So, for example, if you were applying for a course, if you aimed, intended to apply for a course which required you to get A star AA in order to get in, we'd probably be getting you to focus on just making sure you got that rather than perhaps spreading yourself too thin. OK, so that hopefully gives you a bit of a flavour. And I just really want to emphasize this. Think about this for a moment. How much choice did you get when you chose your GCSEs? How many subjects did you actually choose? Probably not that many. Not out of your entire program. With your A-levels, you choose, you should be choosing absolutely everything you study. You've never been in this position before in your entire education. So please make the most of it. We'll return to that theme in a little while. So, here's the main bit then. How do you choose? How do you put together a study program that suits you and is going to take you where you want to go? Or, or at least open the doors that you hope will, uh, will be useful to you. I'm going to talk through a number of factors which I hope will help. And one of the things I often say when I give talks like this is, I'm probably going to leave you with more questions than you had to start with. Um, but hopefully there'll be questions which are useful and which you can apply to help 
make those decisions that you need to because nobody nobody can come along and tell you which are the right subjects for you it's a decision that you have to make for yourself the first one is perhaps not what you're expecting um it might seem a bit of an odd one to start with but it, it's something that we look at quite carefully when we receive applications and when we look at and when, when we look at people's enrollment there isn't an awful lot of uh a level coursework overall compared with uh, the way the way it was a few years ago but there are still some courses which have a very large coursework component and i've listed the key ones here these ones as it says there on the slide have got a significant a really by significant i mean 40 to 50 percent or more um, of assessment through coursework in one or both years and the problem that we've got with a level coursework is key, is basically this it tends to all come at more or less the same time. All has the same a deadline. And the trouble is that however good you are at coursework, if you're trying to meet all of the deadlines at the same time, you end up, well, basically with not enough hours in the day to be able to cope with it. So we try to avoid people giving themselves the spring term from hell, which is what it would end up being, if you have too many of them. Our guidance generally is to avoid having more than two of these coursework heavy subjects on your time table. So that's the first point to bear in mind. And don't worry if you haven't managed to copy all of those down. Um, we'll, we will be checking every, check every application to consider what that coursework load is likely to be. This next factor is, um, uh, I think, a really important piece of advice. Hopefully today you've already been looking at uh, further information about the different subjects that you're interested in. And the main thing that people tend to ask is what do you study? But the point that I want to make to you is it is not just about what you study, but you really need to understand how you study and how you're assessed. Let's think about a little bit more about that. How do you study? Why is that important? Well, this, the, the, the experience you have in the classroom will make a huge difference as to whether or not you enjoy the process and whether or not that's playing to your strengths in terms of your studies. So, for example, we have quite a lot of our humanities and social sciences, exciting subjects for many people, which involve a great deal of discussion and debate. And that's not um, that's not the teachers being lazy and letting people just have a chat about it. It's a really important way of exploring some of the the the, uh, the, the more sophisticated levels of uh, of analysis and. Uh, uh, an evaluation. It's, we have to explore ideas, conflicting ideas from different perspectives. So those things are very important. Some students absolutely love that. And my experience is, to be honest, that most 16 to 18 year olds really do enjoy a bit of a bit of uh, debate and argument. But there are some students who, who don't enjoy that aspect of it. And if that's true of you, then you need to be aware of that kind of learning and think about how much you're going to enjoy it. Similarly, there are things like group work, um, which for some people is a great big, great big plus for others, less so. So if you are considering something like film studies, for example, where it's a great deal of working together in, for some projects, do please bear that in mind. What about the levels of practical work? Is it something is that a big plus for you? And it is for many people. Or is it something that actually you, you'd really rather not do? So how you study can be really important just as important, if not more, and certainly having a bearing on the way in which you learn, is how you're assessed. So I've mentioned coursework already, and I've recognised that that can be a plus or a minus, depending on you. But in addition to that, what about things like, oh, for example, writing long essays? How do you feel about that? Some people are absolutely fine with it. Some people have already developed some real skills in that. But do bear in mind, and I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody off ancient history here, but you can be as passionate as you like about the ancient Romans and ancient, uh, ancient Greeks and so on, but you will not enjoy ancient history if you have an aversion to writing essays, because ancient history has the longest essays of all of the A-levels that we do. It's an important skill, therefore it's something you're going to have to practice, so you're going to write a lot of essays if you study that subject. Absolutely fine. For, for the great majority of people who study it, but I hope you'll recognise that uh, however passionately you're interested in it, essay writing is going to be something you have to get to grips with. So how well do these things, do these assessment styles and these delivery styles match your strengths? And of course, that's a really important thing. 
So one of the things that you can really usefully do is to try and evaluate. Think about, well, what am I good at? Now, this is quite a hard thing for you to do. It's not it's not easy for uh, for anybody at any age to sort of really take a good long hard look at themselves. But there is some evidence from your teachers. There is some evidence from the uh, the work that you've done, the work that's been marked. And I spend a lot of time with some students when we're trying to really tease out what's the right thing for them by looking at the breakdown of which papers did you do well? And how, what did you do when you, your coursework compared with your exam? And that can tell us a great deal about where your strengths lie. So. Another factor that's really important and often the first question that people ask you when you're trying to decide what subjects you should be doing is what you want to do next. I often do it and it is a useful thing to ask somebody, but please bear in mind. You're looking to choose four subjects. And it's a very one of the things that I've learned over many years of trying to support students in their choices. It's a very unusual choice of higher education course or, uh, or career direction that actually decides more than two of those four choices. If you if you want to check yourself, it's very easy. I'll, just, uh, I'll give you some references at the end of it, but it's an easy one to remember. Go to UCAS.com. Go online there and you can search through every higher, edu higher education course in the country, including the ones that we run here. And you can if you tap in something tap, tap in something like computing, you'll get a great long list of courses. And as you dr drill down into each one, you can identify not only the grades that they want for that course, but also any particular combinations of subjects they want. And what you'll find is, as I've said, the most you're likely normally to see is that they want two particular subjects or two subjects of a particular type. So why am I making such a song and dance about this? Well, I often find people have selected a whole set of subjects which they think will go together nicely to support an application for a certain area. And that can be absolutely fine. But often we look at it and think, well, hang on a second. There's this subject over here that you did really well in, but it's not on your list. Why is that? Oh, well, I don't think it's relevant to my career choice. Well, it doesn't have to be because actually they've asked for these two subjects over here and they don't care what the other two subjects are as long as you get good grades in them. So do watch out. And this links me to my next point, which is kind of an extension of that. Do not be afraid of odd combinations. Universities and employers are usually much more interested in their grades. So I'll give you an example. Uh, I do a lot of coaching uh, students for uh, with um, mock interviews for medical school. Uh, so let's take that as an example, but it could apply to any course. Um, the typical entry requirements for that are they want three A's at least um, and, and then two of those subjects, two of those A's should be in biology and chemistry. That's a typical medical offer as they call it, entry requirements. So what does it matter what you get the A in? Well, actually it doesn't matter much at all. That's the most important thing that you get what they've asked for. So should you take physics, for example, which would actually be genuinely useful alongside it? Or should you take something you're really good at? Think about it. I'd only say do with physics if you're really good at physics. If you've got something else that you're really good at, do that because you've got far more chance of, of coming out with those three A's, including which includes biology and chemistry. So you'll normally get better grades if you play to your strengths. It's really important, just remembering what we said earlier on, that you've identified what your strengths are and what your preferred ways of assessment are. And don't feel that for some strange reason, the subjects you choose have got to go together. This isn't flower arranging. This is you choosing the program that you want to study. And if the only thing that links the four subjects that are on your timetable is that they are the four subjects that you think you'll enjoy the most and do best at, that's really all the connection they need. And that's probably the most important piece of advice I'm going to give you today. So I hope that helps. So to round off, just a quick word about entry requirements. Um, our threshold entry requirements for A-level study here are four grade five passes at GCSE. And we, we are intending, uh, as we did last year when uh, we had centre assessed grades, to maintain that, uh, that approach as we go through the, uh, the assessed grades, which, are, which we're expecting further details of after half term. 
amongst those uh, uh, either amongst those five pa those those four grade five passes or alongside them there needs to be english language at least at grade four however there will be additional entry requirements applying for some subjects and the website carries uh, further information on those and when you make your application and we make a conditional offer to you uh, that the uh, that you'll receive a sheet that lists those entry requirements as well. In the second year, we require students who've got at least D's in their AS's in order to be able to progress. And that's the key point for that is that AS is um, AS is a higher level than GCSE, but the A level, the level of demand at A level is higher than AS again. So we want to make sure that we're not set setting people up to uh, to fail. OK. Further reading. I did promise you some further reading, so here you go. Uh, UCAS.com, as I mentioned before, and there's, I've got a rather long URL there for you. Uh, but actually, if you simply Google uh, or use the uh, the uh, whatever search engine you prefer, uh, Russell Group Informed Choices, you'll find that there's a there's a useful publication by the Russell Group, top group of universities, um, for people who want to apply. Uh, for the most prestigious and competitive uh, university courses. We send about a quarter of our students to Russell Group universities. Um, so it, it's, it is a, it's an important thing for you to understand, but do bear in mind that, um, that the guidance there is about the, uh, the people who, who are expecting mostly A's. And what next? Well, we are still, we, although we're relatively late in the year in terms of our cycle of, uh, of advice and guidance activities, we do still have another one if you'd like to come back and find out more. And our website does continue to carry more information about individual subjects if you want to do some more research. Um, we, we have, uh, for some students, we'll still be arranging to have guidance discussion evenings, although, although we are under the circumstances having to uh, be a little bit more streamlined in our application as an offer process. If you want to get the ball rolling today or, uh, or, or, or in the very near future, um, we've got a video prepared, which is on the home page of the, uh, of the open event, um, to help you complete your application form. And I really would urge you to, to do that uh, and uh, and get the ball rolling so that we know about you. And even if you haven't decided on all of your choices, it's it'll it'll give you further access to some more guidance. I hope you find all of that useful. Thank you very much for uh, for coming along to our virtual open event, and we look forward to seeing you in person in real life before too long. Thank you very much.